Shohei Otani, does this make the offseason more interesting around Shohei Otani? Is it going to mean more work for people or less work for people? I think more because it's now really a moving target. Uh, whereas, Jeff, I think last, you know, before the last 24 hours, you would have said, well, it's probably the Dodgers or the Angels, and then maybe there's a surprise. Maybe Seattle gets involved, um, and it's going to be half a billion dollars, and that's what the, the going rate's going to be. I think now it's very different. And I, I think we're going to probably hear in the next day or so what exactly Shohei wants and needs out of out of this next chapter of, of the Angels season, what he's looking to do in the future. Because the question is not for me whether or not he wants to keep pitching. I think he clearly was pitching as recently as yesterday, so he clearly wants to pitch. It's just a question of of how much it matters to him and how much he's willing to give up to make that happen. In other words, how much time away from hitting theoretically if he has to have surgery, is he willing to take? Uh, how much of his future is he willing to spend on pitching versus trying to just be the best DH, maybe first baseman, maybe corner outfielder? Like, like I don't know. It, it really, you now have to sort of pivot and, and think about this next phase of his career. If, if pitching is still right alongside hitting as the most important thing in his life, and if he wants to do that, then I think he's going to have to address this surgically however he can and then try to get back and pitch as early as he can next season. The question, or, or more likely towards 2025 if it ends up being that, the question I have, Jeff, and this is where we start thinking about things in a bit of a three-dimensional chess realm, is it cannot be with this uncertainty. If he wants to pitch, then – then he's not going to get a five- or a six-year deal, I don't think, in, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. If he really wants to pitch, and if he wants that to be a huge part of his career, my advice to him, and I think the logical play is, sign a two-year deal somewhere. With the best chance, you want to sign with the team that says to Shohei, Shohei, I'm going to show you the best plan that exists from a sports science perspective in the realm of rehab and sports science maximizing performance for the next two years with a proven track record of getting guys back for their second Tommy John. And then we'll figure out your future after 2025. This is about not the next 10 years or really even the next one year. It's about the next two years. The, the one year is going to be kind of a combination rehab and performance And then 2025 is all about getting back to being what he's been the last several years. And then you get back on the open market. That's what I see. And and that's where, Jeff, from my perspective, I think it makes it even more interesting. Because go to the the best place that can pay you for two years and and where you can make your huge impact for two years. And and that, I think, is a broader cross-section of Major League Baseball than what we would have thought would have been like a 10-year, $500 million deal from Dodgers, Angels, maybe the Mariners. I think we could actually see more teams get involved right now. See, this interests me for for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, I, I remember, and I, I keep referring to this conversation, but it, it it just really stuck with me. I remember a conversation with Ned Coletti, former Dodgers GM. Uh, and it was a Dodgers analyst up until uh, up until this year. And it was last year and we were talking about Shohei Otani and, and kind of what it would take to get Shohei Otani. And Ned's point was, well, obviously money in a contract, but he also said, and actually Joe Madden said the same thing to us. He said, look, when you bring Shohei in, he impacts everything. He impacts how you view the DH position. He impacts, and the trickle down from that is it impacts for a lot of teams how you view your outfield position. He impacts your pitching because when you sign Shohei Otani, you don't just drop him down into a pre-existing situation and say, you know, good luck, my son, run with it. You've got to 
structure things around him to take into account this very unique skill set, this very unique person. That has an impact on your other starting pitchers because they are going to have to make adjustments off him. And I guess what I, I, I think about this, that's healthy. Now I'm bringing a Shohei Otani in who is hurt, um, having possibly having a second surgery on, on the UCL. And, and so now in addition to having to accommodate a healthy Shohei Otani, I got to figure out a way to accommodate a rehabbing Shohei Otani who may want to play at the same time. And, and I guess what I'm what long way is saying this is I almost think if I'm Shohei Otani, uh, John, that the best play is to stay with the angels where they know how to take care of me. They've got me through this before. You know, all the, the support staff is in there, you know, and I've got to think the angels, the angels aren't going to lowball him because the angels want him to stay. So I, it almost makes me think that this could be solved very quickly with him staying, staying in LA, staying with the angels. Well, I, I, I very much agree, Jeff, that there is a higher chance of him staying there than would have been the case a few days ago. Totally agree. Because he's still a relatively young enough player to where if he, if he wanted to, again, extend it for two years, let's say, that he could still make a boatload of money if he comes back and proves that he's able to do this again. And and show maybe that he hits the open market after 25 with a better head of steam and better health. It's just it's so interesting, Jeff, because you know that's what that's what I would say if if this were Aaron Judge a year ago. That it, let's let's say that God forbid the Judge had missed half the season. Yeah, maybe you would have just signed a, a one year deal with the Yankees and reestablished your value and then and then done it all again. But there is so little precedent for Otani mm-hmm. that. That that is my instinct as well. What you're just articulating, but there are no comps. Right. We got no comps for this guy. We we don't know what to say. And I mean, the only way that that there are comps is if he basically says in the next couple of days, I'm done pitching. But I don't think he's going to say that. Mm-hmm. I, the, the one thing that I think would be interesting is if he said, let's. So hypothetically, let's just sort of go down this road. For I mean, we're t- talking hypotheticals sure. anyway. But let's say that that it's not the full Tommy John that it's the internal brace procedure. That's sort of like the express TJ that we have heard about the last couple of years. So let's say that he gets the express and, and then he comes back and says, you know what, Uh, as a compromise here, I'm going to do the express, but this also means that I'm no longer going to start. I want to be a reliever. I'm going to be a closer possible. I suppose, um, it, it, you know, that, that is one way to do it. You could obviously DH, DH, DH until then the DH enters the game as the pitcher, which you can do late in the game. You know, so by rule, it would work as long as you're the last guy on the mound. Like you wouldn't necessarily be the sixth inning guy, or seventh inning guy. You, you have to be the last guy. Um, so that like that could make some sense if you're going to say the internal brace will buy you a couple years uh, maybe maybe longer than that, and it's going to be a, as a reliever, so it's a little bit less of a workload or a lot less of a workload. I mean, these are all things that are that are possible. We just we just don't know, and that's where Jeff, the we've become such an algorithm based sport to where a lot of the offers that teams make to players are based on what the algorithm says. The algorithm here is is not going to help us much <laughs> because. The, the algorithm is going to say, we've seen nobody like this guy before, and we've certainly seen nobody like him who's now got a torn, AC, torn UCL. We've got no idea, no idea what to do with him. And so to, to make him an offer, it's going to have to be a bit of a to heck with the algorithm mentality, and you better be a really sure as an owner and really sure as a GM to have that type of a decision. Yeah. And, and Shohei has to really buy into your culture and what you're doing. Like, there's no way, or maybe not no way, but, like, I see no credible scenario in which Shohei says, yeah, I've got to potentially have this surgery. It's going to be a little touch and go for the next year about what my availability is. Yeah, I'm going to sign with the Mets or the Yankees. No chance. Yeah. No way. 
he's going to have to go to a place that's super stable with a really good culture, really good medical people. Like, I think the Dodgers would fit that description. The Angels already know him. But this is not like a I'm going to take a chance and go somewhere new for a couple of years kind of a mentality. I, mean, I, I tend to think that you're, you're spot on. Like, either go, either you're all in on what you heard about the Dodgers and you're going to sign with the Dodgers because they've got, like, the best in class medical, which they've got the best in class of everything. Um, and then maybe you find a way to make a two-year deal with some opt-ins or opt-outs, and all of a sudden that becomes an eight-year deal or a ten-year deal, whatever it is. Like, maybe that's how you do it. But I, I don't see him gambling and going somewhere else, um, and, and, it, and it's sort of like taking a chance and rolling the dice. I mean, it's, this, this has to be either a place that he's familiar with or a place that he really wants to be, and it's almost like you have like a two-year deal that becomes a longer-term deal. It just it, it all of a sudden becomes three-dimensional chess and checkers for us. The one thing I would say, though, that, that's really interesting here is if you all of a sudden, if it comes back that Shohei needs – Tommy John, again, hypothetically, that he mm-hmm. needs this. And that, that next year is compromised. And if you're a team that, like, desperately needs to win next season, like if you're the Yankees, let's say, or, or you know, any number of teams that are in total win-now mode, you would almost rather have Cody Bellinger than, than Otani next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. That, that, again, <laughs> that's like the short-term thing. I mean, obviously, Show is such a unique talent. But Bellinger – right now is a gold glove defender in center field and at first base and is coming off a monster year that is not Otani level, but darn close to it. And Otani's pure defensive value is like zero, basically. I mean, obviously the pitching value has been high. It's not high right now, but like Otani is right now bat only. He is Mm -hmm. only a DH. Bellinger is a like maybe 80% of the offensive player that Otani is right now, maybe even more than that. But then he's like, he, he gives you deluxe defensive value, whereas Otani gives you nothing right now. Right. It's just, it's a, so this is where, Jeff, it, it has become, it's not the offseason that we expected, but in some ways, it's in, in different ways, it's actually more interesting because we really, have, we really have no idea what to expect. And that's the reality right now. We really have no idea what's coming in November, December, January. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I can almost see a scenario where, for, for Shohei Otani, where someone still makes him an offer that makes him, and it could be the Angels, that makes him the highest paid position player in baseball history and includes a crap ton of achievable thresholds based on the possibility of him pitching. In other words, yeah. 40, $40 million, you're going to make $40 million this year. If you make 20 starts, I don't know, maybe that becomes $60 million. You know what I'm saying? Where you incorporate the thresholds so that you the, 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 um, the impetus is there for him to pitch if healthy, but he's still going to be okay. You're, you're not sort of forcing him to pitch, right? In other words, you got a pitcher, you're only going to make half of what you're going to make. Right. But that, I, again, I, I keep getting back to this. That's a complicated contract. And the thing the Angels have over everybody else is you would think theoretically they've been talking to Otani's people for the last three years. In, in some form about what's it going to take to keep him here. Like it is, it's, right. it, it's going to be fascinating. It really is. And then of course, there's always a chance that you've got an owner that just says to hell with it. Here's 600 million. Right. <laughs> then what do you exactly. do? And, and now, and, and you also have the potentiality of, as you were saying that, I mean, my, my immediate thought goes to what has been the, the zeitgeist for baseball contracts for a long time, which is opt outs. What if, what if you say we're going to Absolutely. sign you to a like we're going to give you a four year at fifty million dollars per contract so just like round numbers like four years two hundred million dollars to just be a DH which is absurd money to be a DH but just bear with me here that you can say okay let's just give you a crazy DH contract but that if in any year you hit X number of innings then you get to opt out and then you can become a free agent again and and do the whole two way thing I mean that's 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 a possibility. It's, and, and the other thing I would say, too, and this is where we have to, as I sort of just dip my toe in, like, 
real world conversation about how all these things are happening. You know, you're, you're hearing these different thoughts about, okay, are these teams really up for sale? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are, are different, I'm just saying different teams around the sport. And if you're talking about financing these like massive deals or, or hypothetically like a half a billion dollar deal that he was, that he would have been looking at potentially, remember the, where we're at with interest rates and all these other different things. I mean, th- these larger economic forces are, are going to impact this at some point. And, and wh- how, how you finance and how you're av- able to cover um, the, the expenses when you have a contract like this, how does it, how does it um, anticipate or, or, or influence the willingness of a team to really stretch their payroll with interest rates being this high and, and how you finance your club as a larger part of your business empire? I mean, all these things are part of the conversation, and it's interesting that I think it's going to affect, Jeff, baseball in a way that it's not affecting as much NHL, NBA, NFL, because they've got a salary cap. They have, they have cost certainty in general where there's linkage uh, from revenues and expenses, whereas baseball, it's a little bit more of a mapless road. We've got Steve Cohen, who's at the high, high of the high end. Um, it's just, there's just a lot of uncertainty in the industry, uh, even though, in general, Industry strength is really good. Mm -hmm. Attendance is up 9% this year, so a lot of the macro forces in baseball are really encouraging. This, this, though, the Otani element is just really what it is, Jeff, is it's a downer for all of us because we just love watching him do what he does, and we love watching him – you know, prove Babe Ruth wrong when the Bambino said that it couldn't be done, and and he's really defied gravity for years. And we just now we just don't know how plausible it's going to be in the future. I just hope that when you look back, that we've all appreciated the ride for what it's been, because it's been something that we've never seen before. And he's really treated us to amazing nights of watching him do his thing. Uh, we just don't quite know when the when the fullness of the the show a show is going to be it's going to be back in effect because uh, we're entering a period of uncertainty here. 